Coming up on today's UI7 news break, new budget cuts may directly affect the careers of some U of I students. A wave of students in blue corduroy came to campus on Saturday, while at the fairgrounds, students learned that cows are a lot of responsibility. And two Champaign neighborhoods will have a chance to receive smoke detector installations. Your UI7 news break starts right now. From the Richmond Journalism Teaching Studio at the University of Illinois campus, this is your UI7 news break, your U of I news source. For UI7 news break, I'm Nina Flores. And I'm Billy Hatfield. Illinois Governor Bruce Rauner recently announced a new round of budget cuts. These new cuts could be impacting students in the University of Illinois Ag Education Program. UI7 Newsbreak's Caitlin McClure introduces us to one student who feels her career may be in jeopardy. It's your opening statement, so if you guys are arguing that, yes, we need to do a brownfield, we need to build on brownfield rather than, yeah, what is your main thing that you're going to tell them? Betsy Keeger has been a student in the University of Illinois Ag Ed Program for three years. Becoming an ag teacher was always her plan. However, with Governor Rauner's new proposed budget cuts, which zeroes out the ag education line item, Betsy may never get the chance to pursue her dream job. For my future, I will not be able to have a job. Um, I will, a lot of the programs will shut down throughout the state. Um, those programs that will stay open are going to be funded by their school, which is highly unlikely to happen. The way the state education budget stands currently, Chicago receives $1.4 million to do whatever they choose with in their education system, leaving little to no money for downstate Illinois. You don't necessarily have to have three opposing arguments, but three is your max. Keeker is from Mount Vernon, Illinois. She says that only about 2% of her high school population is from a farm background, although the ag program there is the second largest in the state. Um, and that means that our agriculture classes are putting an impact on students that aren't just living out on the farm, um, students that realize how important it is to know about horticulture, know about the plants around you, know about what's going on in your community agriculture-wise, um, know about the food that you're eating. Ag Education Teaching Associate Deborah Cordy says the budget has made her students more passionate about teaching agriculture, but many are worried about the longevity of the industry. Uh, they start to wonder if maybe this is the right path for them at this time just because how long will agriculture education programs be around? As for Keeker, she's already exploring other career opportunities. I've thought about joining the military so that I actually have a job after college. At this point, Keeker believes joining the military is her best option. In Urbana, UI7 Newsbreak, I'm Caitlin McClure. In order for students like Betsy Keeker to teach outside Illinois, they would have to apply for teaching certificates from each respective state. Each state requires a different process to earn their certificate. All require an additional fee, training, and waiting period. For New York, Nebraska, North Carolina, South Dakota, New Mexico, and Wisconsin, one must have an in-state education degree. Although some students are nervous for their futures, maybe U of I students can start breathing sighs of relief. Forbes released a list of schools where college students get the most for their tuition. Out of 300 schools, the University of Illinois sits pretty at number seven. Urbana-Champaign isn't lonely on the list. Ten other Illinois schools made the cut. Northwestern and University of Chicago are also in the top 50. Forbes evaluated most cost-effective schools based on several factors. They include overall quality ranking and post-graduation earnings. Fifty years ago, FFA stood for Future Farmers of America. Today, it stands for much more. Students in blue corduroy jackets flooded the U of I campus on Saturday. This official dress has a deeper meaning to the students who wear it with style. To an organization, the blue jacket is more than just a uniform. The back of the jacket consists of the organization's logo, the state's name, and the name of the student's school. The front of the jacket bears the student's name, the highest office they've held, and pins signifying various honors and awards. To be in full official dress, black shoes must be worn with either a black skirt or pants. Under the jacket, the student must wear a white button-up shirt and the official FFA tie or scarf. This uniform has been in place since 1933 to give a recognizable image to the organization. When a student dons the blue corduroy, they represent themselves, their school, their state, and the nation's largest student organization. A historic decision will impact university investments. UI7's Jessica Ramos has more on the six-year student effort to create change. 
coalition that began during the movement to end apartheid. Divest Now is the home of generations of students seeking change on campus. This time, they are committed to ending U of I's investments in the coal industry. For several years, the Divest Now campaign at U of I has seen students like former President Drew O'Brien continue advocating even after graduating. In some ways, it is a torch that continues to be passed on. The leadership of this campaign has been extremely strong, and no matter what happens, we will keep organizing, keep making our voices heard, and keep fighting the good fight. After six years of pleas, the Academic Senate held a vote on the topic of coal divestment on Monday. Divest Now held a rally before the vote to remind the U of I community of their commitment. Students at the rally are wearing orange patches in support of coal divestment nationwide. Members of the Student Senate filed a resolution seeking for this change. College of Aces representative Madison Scanlon says the university may have been afraid to divest. Is it more important to have money or save the planet, you know, <laughs> which is dramatic, but is it, is it important that we reduce our carbon footprint as a large institution? Absolutely. The university is indirectly investing $5.1 million to the coal industry. Over 50 faculty members support divestment. And in 2013, U of I students voted 6 to 1 in favor of it. Co-president of Divest Coal, Jackie Genova, says that the university has ignored the students, but that is not an excuse to give up. So you have to speak up, you need to organize, you need to be loud, and if you want to be heard badly enough, you will be, even if it takes six years. The resolution to commit to end coal divestment is a milestone for the organization and the university. In Urbana, I'm Jessica Ramos, UI7 News. Move over, Westminster Dog Show. Showing cattle is a local tradition for young people. UI7 News breaks Miranda Holloway tells us how cows teach more than just agriculture. Caring for an animal is a lot of responsibility, and taking it for a walk is a difficult task when you're six years old and your pet is about 1,300 pounds. Stetson is in his third year of showing cattle and proudly walked his cow Chloe around the ring this weekend. How do you think he did today? Good. Good? At the University of Illinois Hoof and Horn and Lakeland College Spring Showdown, two judges evaluated two rings of cattle and their showers. The event allowed people from around the area to sh camp, come out and show what they had. The show is a chance for U of I alumni and young people to connect. Let's young people and students get involved, which is different than a lot of shows, which is what I guess the future of agriculture is about and what we want to promote within the livestock industry. Often, showing cattle is a family affair. Daddy did. You did? Has he taught you a lot about it? Mm -hmm. Very nice. The stream of activity between the two rings at the show was constant, and the competition was strong. But Moore said there's a lot more to showing cattle than coming in first. And it teaches you that you're not always going to win, but the amount of work that you put into it is always going to be worth it. Stetson and Chloe took second in their division and were just one of about 200 entries. The friendly atmosphere at the show also allows bonding and life lessons among participants. But it definitely teaches kids like the cliche lessons about like hard work and things like that. But at the end of the day, I have friends all over the country and it really, it, it does teach you how to be responsible. These lessons will come in handy wherever they go. But tradition shows that they might end up in this same ring with their own kids and cows in the future. From Urbana, Miranda Holloway, UI7 Newsbreak. Coming up, we will show what resources Champaign residents can receive to prevent fires. And we have a dog who survived after getting attacked by a coyote. Much good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. I'm always called names. Um, everywhere that I go, there's always someone um, calling me names, calling me gay. I've been choked, thrown up against a wall, punched. Nobody's ever tried to help me. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? 
Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you've got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. <laughs> God. <laughs> Residents of two Champagne neighborhoods will have the chance to receive free smoke detector installations. UI7 Newsbreak's Julia Henders has more on how the Champagne community came together to spread the news. Volunteers and firefighters are letting people know that they'll be back in their neighborhoods soon. So we're kind of trying to uh, find out today about how many homes we, we need to cover when we come back on the 16th, and we're also uh, looking for volunteers to help on the 16th. Residents of the Garden Hills and Crossroads neighborhoods will receive free smoke detectors along with free installation on April 16th. The City of Champaign has been awarded a FEMA grant that will provide funds to purchase smoke detectors for these specific areas. Our statistics show that there's a pocket in Champaign in these two neighborhoods where the number of fires over the last five years has gone up by 12%. Uh, nationally, the number of fires has gone down the last couple decades even, so we definitely have a pocket of homes here that um, the trend is, is going the wrong direction and we want to do something about that. This weekend, volunteers put up door hangers and yard signs with information about the upcoming project. Members of the community are coming together to make sure every home is safely equipped for a fire. So we want to make sure that everybody has smoke detectors so that if, uh, you know, in the event of a fire, they'll go off. A lot of people we know don't put their batteries in. And, um, in these areas, there's a lot of homes with children and Batteries expensive. And if you would like more information on how you can help on April 16th, call the Champaign Fire Department at 217-403-7200. In Champaign, Julia Hinders, UI7 Newsbreak. Staying healthy can seem to be an overwhelming task. Seth Kovar has more on some very simple things you can do to be healthier in today's Health Minute. You can do them every day, and researchers say they keep health problems at bay. These are some activities that are not only fun, but are beneficial as well. Volunteering. It's more than just a good feeling you get from helping others. According to an American Journal of Public Health study, people who volunteer are better protected against stress. And researchers found those who don't give back as much had a 30% higher risk of dying after a stressful life event. Cooking. Studies show, for the most part, a home-cooked meal is healthier than one from a restaurant. Meals out may contain lots of salt, butter, and oil. A 2014 study in the journal Public Health Nutrition found people who regularly eat at home consume about 130 fewer calories than those who don't. And playing with your pet. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, caring for an animal has been shown to decrease blood pressure and cholesterol levels and take away feelings of loneliness. And that's on top of all the calories you burn taking Spotter Fido for a walk. For today's Health Minute, I'm Seth Govar. And we close today's show with a happy ending for a dog that was attacked by a coyote in Somersworth, New Hampshire. Police in Somersworth say the coyote attacked this yellow Labrador retriever Sunday morning. The nine-year-old dog suffered cuts on her leg and ear. They believe the same coyote attacked two mastiffs later in the day. All of the dogs are expected to recover from their injuries, and the coyote that attacked them has been euthanized. That's all the time we have today for this UI7 news break. Thanks for joining us, and have a great weekend.